Hi you guys, this is Mrs. McBride speaking and today I want to talk to you about the scientists that were involved in coming up with the atomic structure of an atom. So the first scientist that we have is Democritus. He was a Greek philosopher that um, was around 400 BC and he was the first one to suggest that everything is made up of tiny particles called atomos. The second scientist that we have or philosopher is Aristotle. Now Aristotle was also a Greek philosopher and he came around 350 BC but he took a different approach from Democritus and said that everything is made up of fundamental elements earth, wind, fire, and water. And then we have John Dalton in 1766 to 1788 and John Dalton was an English chemist and he said that atoms are tiny, solid, individual, indivisible particles. So Democritus uh, um, came up with the idea of atoms. Aristotle dropped the idea of atoms. And then John Dalton came back and he picked up the idea of atoms. So John Dalton came up with the atomic theory where he came up with four postulates that described his atomic theory. The very first postulate said that all matter is made up of atoms and atoms are indivisible and indestructible. The second postulate said that all atoms of a given element are identical in mass and properties. The third postulate says compounds are formed by a combination of two or more different kinds of atoms. And the fourth postulate says a chemical reaction is a rearrangement of atoms. Now, after a while, it was found that the first and the second postulates of Dalton's atomic theory were not correct. We have since then found that uh, um, all matter is made up of atoms. Atoms are indivisible and destructible. That's not true. That is false because now we know that atoms are made up of protons, electrons, and neutrons. So this is false and this is where the whole idea of nuclear chemistry comes in. Then we have all atoms of a given element are identical in mass and properties. This is also found to be false because now we know there is something called isotopes, which we'll talk about later. The model that John Dalton proposed is called the billiard ball model, and it's basically just a billiard ball. So he said this is how an atom looks. Moving on to our next scientist, we have J.J. Thompson. So J.J. Thompson actually did um, an experiment using cathode ray tubes. It's also called Crookes tube. And basically he founded the existence of very tiny negatively charged particles, which he calls electrons. And he determines that all atoms contain electrons. Because he knows that atoms have an overall neutral charge, he proposed that electrons are definite negative particles that are surrounded by uniformly positive matrix. And the model that he, um, his model is actually called the plum pudding model. So let's look at his experiment. Here's the cathode ray that he was working with. And uh, um, the cathode ray was hooked up to an energy um, source, this battery right here. And this energy source uh, um, allowed electricity to go from one side to the other side. So one side of the cathode ray was negative, ch negatively charged and the other side was positively charged. And he, you would see a beam of light going through this cathode ray. He didn't know exactly what this beam of light was, but he did place a magnet, a positively charged magnet on top and a negatively charged magnet on the bottom. And then he noticed something really strange when he put the magnets there. He noticed that the beam of light that was going through the cathode ray actually went up towards the positive magnet. It was attracted towards the positive magnet. It, it repelled against the negative magnet, negatively charged magnet. So then he flipped around, did a couple of more experiments, and every single time this beam of light would be attracted to the positively charged magnet 
and it would be it would repel the negatively charged magnet. So he came up with the conclusion that this beam of light contained some negatively charged particles, which he called electrons. Now in the plum pudding model right here that he has, um, you can tell that, um, that in his model, this uh, um, gray space that you have in between, this is all positively, it's a positive charged area. And then these little particles that we have, this is where he said that these are the negatively charged particles, which he called electrons. And just like a plum pudding, um, you have, whenever you have a pudding, you have things just mixed in throughout. That's what he said that this looked out. The atom looked like it was where these electrons were just in there, just thrown inside the pudding, just placed inside. So our next scientist that we have is Ernest Rutherford. And his experiment, he came along in 1910, and he discovers the atomic nucleus while he's performing the gold foil experiment. And he proposes a system in which the atomic nucleus is surrounded by electrons. And he said that the atomic nucleus is thought to be composed entirely of protons. So this is Rutherford's experiment. It's plum pudding. Um, the overall atom is neutrally to, has overall a neutral charge. So even if you put uh, um, anything, if you put any charge through it, it's just going to go through the atom because the atom does not have a charge right here. Um, it's not positive nor negative. It is neutral. Well, Rutherford came along and he had this. Um, source of a of energy and this source of energy actually had had alpha particles and if you know anything about alpha particles they are basically positively charged particles so they have a um, positive charge we now know this as protons but at that time it was just positively charged particles and what he did is that he put a screen around his gold foil, and he started, he took these alpha particles and he started shooting at the gold foil. And something interesting happened, that all the alpha particles that he shot into the gold foil, well, some of them went straight through and made marks, um, little scattered marks around the screen. Um, so some of them went straight through and played, and there, were, there was a mark right behind the gold foil. Some of the alpha particles actually scattered behind the gold foil. And some of these alpha particles actually deflected from the gold foil. So they basically bounced back. And so some actually bounced back inside the alpha particle. So the question is, why did that happen? Because um, Rutherford, you know, Thompson said that they go straight through. Why aren't these alpha particles going straight through? Well, what happens if you look at the nuclear, if you look at this picture right here, is that the alpha particles that he's emitting right here, these small little dots, they're positively charged. And the only way that this positively charged particle will even deflect over here, meaning completely bounce in the opposite direction, is that if there's something inside the gold foil here that is also positively charged. So if you have a positive and a positive, that positive will repel and go in, the, go in a very different direction. So these two alpha, par the alpha particle came very close to the nucleus here where it actually repelled and went in the opposite direction. So that's what happened here. Well, why didn't that happen to the ones back here? What happened is that some of these went straight through. That's because they were so far away from the nucleus, this alpha particle, that it just went straight through um, onto the screen. And then some right here, they were not as a, they weren't as close as the original one here, but they were not as far as some of the alpha particles. So this alpha particle happens to be um, came very close when it was being shot um, to the nucleus, 
that it actually deflected a little bit and went in the opposite direction. So through Rutherford, we came to the conclusion that uh, um, the atomic nucleus is positively charged. And so when he said that the atomic nucleus is positively charged, he gave it the term protons right here. Okay. Okay, so we've got Thomson that came up with electrons, Rutherford that came up with the concept of protons. So um, what about um, the next scientist, Niels Bohr? He came along in 1913 and he developed, his model is actually called the solar system model. And he said that these electrons, these electrons that Thomson discovered, actually they circle the nucleus. So um, Thomson said originally that they were um, the plum pudding, they were just scattered throughout the atom. Well, Rutherford um, Bohr came along and he said that's not true, that these electrons are actually circling the nucleus, which is what Rutherford found to be positively charged, full of protons. And the last scientist that we have is Sir James Chadwick. He discovered neutrons in 1932. And basically, he discovered that inside the nucleus, you not only have protons, but you also have neutrons. And from this, this now concludes our basic understanding of the atomic structure. From this, we knew what, from um, Chadwick and other scientists' discovery, we knew basically what the atomic structure um, consisted of. So the last model that I want to talk to you about is called the quantum mechanical model of an atom. And what this is saying is that, that electrons are in a volume of space that is, that is around a nucleus. So we have this volume of space, um, and these volume of space is a complex shape of orbitals or electron clouds. And what this model is saying is that we can predict or there is a probability that these that an electron is in one of these orbitals rather than saying for certainty that an electron is in that orbital. So these electrons move freely within these probability clouds. So this concludes our talk about the atomic model in the scientists that were involved in discovering the atomic structure. Um, keep in mind that Dalton came up with the billiard ball model, Thompson came up with the plum pudding model, and Rutherford came up with the nuclear model. Bohr came up with the solar system model, and then of course at the end we have our quantum mechanical model. And this quantum mechanical model is the model that we use today.